Welcome back to the LNX Files. As always, this is a safe space for all things spooky, and today we're going to use these tarot cards to do a post-mortem on Haley Bieber's episode of Call Her Daddy. We're just going to do a deeper dive on what was said on the show. Let's do it. So I really enjoyed this episode of Call Her Daddy. In fact, it was the first time I'd watched an entire episode. I think that the podcast is doing a great service to young women everywhere, having these very frank conversations about the intercourse so that women can, especially young women, can have like a safe space where they feel like, you know, these topics are accessible and, you know, they can ask questions and share things. So I think it is very, very positive. So Haley Bieber Baldwin, as we know, like she's from a very Christian background. So I was pleasantly surprised to hear that she was doing an episode. I didn't expect her to get into any like details about, you know, her special time life with Justin Bieber. I mean, she did share some things, which I think we all appreciated. Now to recap, Haley is a Sagittarius. She's got a Sag rising and, a, and an Aries moon. So she's all fire. I always say that Sagittarius is probably the chillest of the fire signs. Like I'll meet Sagittarians and not know that they're fire signs. Like I'll, I'll sometimes ask if they're a water sign. You know, to Haley's credit, she is on the cusp of Scorpio. So Alex, the host of Call Her Daddy, she is a Leo. So I definitely felt like the interview to me was like a meeting of two fire signs. Like there's a lot of like laughter and like warmth and like frankness and like extroverted humor. So Haley saying how she's like a people person and how she likes meeting new people and being cool with people and not having any bad blood with people. That's very, very Sag. That's like the Sag playbook. I thought it was very interesting in the interview that they didn't refer to Selena by name ever. They just called her her, like out of respect to Haley. So I thought that was interesting just because like she has to deal with so much like drama and bullying online. And I was also really surprised <laughs> that like so much of the interview was talking about that. Like I know that Haley, I know that Haley is bullied online, but like, I guess I never fully grasped the extent that it's like all day, every day by these, you know, Selena, Jelena fans. So let's, let's go and do a deeper dive on this article. So the first thing I wanted to know is why did they break up in 2016? So the gossip that I've heard about this was that like Haley Baldwin was like going to the airport to like meet Justin to go on some like vacation, <clears throat> some tropical paradise. And he just like broke up with her over the phone and was like, don't come. And then he proceeded to like fly in all these Instagram hoes. And then he proceeded to date Sophia Richie for a month. And then he got back with Selena. Like I, like he just kind of lost her mind and then they didn't speak for two years. And so I just assumed that Justin had a freak out cause he wasn't in a very stable place and he, because he's a pop star. And so, you know, the two kind of go hand in hand. So what was that about? The second thing I would like to know is why did these two get back together in the first place? Because basically time had passed. It was like over, it was like over two years or almost two years, time had passed, okay, right? They ran into each other at a Christian conference, right? Like you don't run into Justin Bieber at any conference. Like he travels with security. Like he's whisked away to like the secret wing of the conference. You don't run into him at the punch bowl and you're like, oh, hey, Justin. So Haley kind of alluded to these things in the interview. She was just kind of like, well, we know what happened and we know how we got here. And she's like, and I know, and I was there and like, we're not here to rip her privacy to shreds. We're just kind of like, hey, can you give us another hint about like how that rekindling came about? Because, you know, it was quite a rekindling, right? Can you tell us anything about the power dynamics in the Justin and Haley relationship? So like when she talks about her mom, she's just like, my mom was so gentle and so sweet. And she just, she doesn't always, st you know, stick up for herself. And I was like, oh, like, you mean your, your mom's a doormat is essentially what I was like, that's what I'm hearing. I was like, nice lady, kind of a doormat. Like, that's what I, I mean, let's, let's just get real folks. Yeah. Okay. So is Haley a doormat in this relationship? What are the power dynamics like? I really hope Justin is not like calling the shots in this relationship. Cause that'd be kind of scary, you know? Okay. How bad is the mental health stuff 
you know, because she did allude to feeling suicidal. That's that she didn't use that word. I'm using it. Like she said that, you know, she's thought about not being here. She's gone on some seven day mental health retreat where you're in therapy for hours. That sounds like hell. And she did say therapist at one point, but she also said psychiatrist, meaning like someone who prescribes medication to balance you out, which I have zero problems with. You know, I, if you were under her level of scrutiny and public attention, probably a lot of people would be seeing a psychiatrist. So no, no judgments here folks. So just give us a sense of how bad it is it can get or has gotten. And uh, last thing, anything else you want us to know about their special time life between Justin and Haley? Like we're not here to rip their privacy to shreds. We're just asking the spirit guys. I thought it was really cute when she said, you know, the doggy style word and like the Alex was like, Thank you, Haley. That is so beautiful you said that. I thought it was really funny because, you know, her answers were like kind of vague at times or you're like, what? Like, which do you like better, coffee or chocolate? And she's like, oh, they're really both great. I love both. Always, you know? So anyway, okay, so let's start with the first question. Why did they break up in 2016? Um, wow, this is like really infuriating when the guides do this. So, okay, we asked this question, yes, and all we got was the Eight of Cups. So the Eight of Cups is a classic breakup card. So that's like saying, hey, why did you fall? And the guides are like, yeah, we fell. Mm -hmm. So basically in saying, why did they break up? They're saying, yeah, they broke up. But if we look closer at this card, there are actually other hints there. So basically what's happening here is that someone's leaving a situation that's pretty good, you know, eight cups. That's nothing to sneeze at. But they're saying these cups aren't doing it for me. I have to put on my red cloak of passion and then go find like what's really right for me and so basically what they're saying is that like Justin was kind of searching back then the person that she was as a teenager just you know it wasn't right at the time it wasn't what he needed or what he thought he needed at the time is what this is suggesting and he was looking for something else I know it's not a great answer but this is I mean it's relevant okay how did they rekindle in 2018 like can you tell us anything else about that Oh, interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, so we got the Six of Swords. So this is a card that can come up for breakups. It's basically leaving a, uh, a broken, rocky situation and going to find calmer waters. But it can also come up with a couple that's doing that together. So basically, when they crossed paths in 2018, they were sort of like seeking shelter together is what this is suggesting. Like Justin was in a place where he needed calmer waters. I can't imagine why. I mean, he was just dating Selena, right? I'm sure that was like smooth sailing right? Basically, like, he'd had a lot of drama with S Selena. Like, that relationship has always come through as very rocky and kind of, like, unstable. And, like, together they sensed that they could create a safe harbor. And so that had something to do with it, which makes sense. What are the power dynamics between Justin and Haley? Is Haley a doormat? Oh, well, this is weird. Oh, I see. Well, they're not really answering, but here's what it is. So we got the Wheel of Fortune in reverse. So the Wheel of Fortune upright, it's a card of fate. It's a card of like, get out of the way. The winds of fate, the winds of karma, things are turning, they're wheeling and dealing, and you really just need to kind of step back and just let life, fate, and karma do its thing. And there's, and even, even if you don't do that, there's really nothing you can do about the situation. So when this card comes up in reverse, it's a card of choices. It's a card of like, now's not the time to focus on fate. Now's where we use our free will as humans. So on the one hand, the way that we can interpret this is just sort of like, the guides are just saying that like, well, Haley chooses to be the way she wants to be in the relationship, and they both do. So the power dynamics are both their choices, which is like, thanks guides, that's really helpful. But keep in mind the guides are often very literal at times. We can't forget that the Anubis figure at the is now at the top of the wheel, and in this position it's laying down like a doormat. You know, typically it's like this. Like this, it's kind of like, oh look, this this Anubis figure, this ancient Egyptian deity is now laying back and you could step on it kind of like a doormat. So I think that this is the guide's way of giving us a gentle yes, that the power dynamics between Justin and Haley are a little 
specific, let's say. I think that she's probably very accommodating. How bad does the mental health stuff get? How? Oh, okay. Okay, interesting. All right, so we got the Four of Pentacles. So the Four of Pentacles upright, it's a card of hoarding, hoarding resources, time, money, affection, typically. So this comes up a lot with greedy people, people who have a very unhealthy relationship with money. So when this card comes up in reverse, it's a card of wanting to let things go. So it, it's good because it's not like a, a terribly fatalistic card, so it wouldn't be correct to... I don't think it would be correct to label or use the word suicidal, but like it suggests that things can get so challenging and so dark that she just wants to let it all go. Like she wants to just be like, oh, I'm just gonna like go to the forest and live in the woods by myself. I'm just gonna let go of all of this. It's a desire. It's, it's a strongly escapist type of card. You know, it's a little nihilistic. And is there anything else you can tell us about their special time together? Oh, this is adorable. This is adorable. We got the Ten of Cups. So this is like the happily ever after card. It's like so cute and so sweet. And that's why it doesn't come up that much in readings. Like we don't really get it a lot. So it's it's the fairy tale ending. It's the card of like, oh, I love you and I love our life together. And we have these ten cups of love and abundance and this rainbow and this happy home. And yes, there are children here and they don't have kids yet, but it may be suggesting that that is in the future. I mean, I'm sure it is. So that is adorable. That's really cute. So we wish them both well, especially Haley, all the stuff she has to deal with. So comment below. What did you think of the podcast? Let me know. Like and subscribe and as always we'll do this again